Hello everyone, Tactical Witch here. Today we have a battle replay sent in by Crown Metal featuring the Pistolies as the Empire. These guys do have two shots per volley here as they dual wield pistols. Unfortunately, they are a bit overshadowed by Outriders and their six shots repeater handguns. But funny enough, the Pistolies have better accuracy than the Outriders with their spray and pray handguns. Both of their pistol shots are aimed and doesn't spread like the repeaters. For the rest of the army, melee frontline is quite standard with a mix of different state troops, swordsmen and spears. And then a second line of spears and halberds. In the mobility department, other than the five pistoliers scattered all over the battlefield, there are also three empire knights for a little bit of melee mobility presence. In his guise leading the army, Boris Toddbringer coming in with his full toolkit, minus deadly onslaught and foe seeker. So all the items and abilities, passive ones, are on him. And he is followed by an empire captain coming in with only hold the line. Behind the flyers, there's an Amethyst wizard hiding in the trees. On foot, coming in with Spirit Leech and Fate of Buna. For the beastmen, led by Persian warrior, front line of Pestigals mixed in with Angor herds, going rather wide here. Going rather wide here as most of the remaining funds went into various kinds of mobility, extending the beastmen flanks. Basically just a ton of Senegals, two Senegals with great weapons and a regular Senegals, same goes for the other flank. Most of them have armor piercing, no doubt trying to counteract the Empire Heavy Calf. Behind everything, a couple of monstrous infantry backbone, one of them the great weapon Minotaurs, the other the Butchers of Kalkengard. Leading the army, Malagor the Dark Omen flying in the skies, coming in with a Flock of Doom and Penumbral Pendulum. That's it for the army build here, now let's get the battle started. When both sides have vanguard deployment troops, things are getting started way earlier than usual as the Senegal is bounding straight for the Pistoliers deployed right next to them, trying to hack down some of that skirmishing firepower but the Pistoliers are quite swift themselves staying ahead of the Senegal's and blasting them in the face with their dual pistols. Senegal's after taking noticeable losses decided to pull back with Boris and the Empire Captain closing in. On the other side, the Pistolies also will start skirmishing and trying to pick off some of these unshielded Senegals, doing some pretty nice damage while Empire Knights doing a cheeky charge into the Pestigals but they are being slowed down by the poison, being hit by a flock of doom earlier as well, draining a bit of their health away and now because they are slowed, Senegals are able to catch up and start hacking them down with their armor piercing weapon strength alongside the Pestigals, bogging down some of these Empire models in the melee fight. Pistolias are rushing in, trying to provide some skirmishing firepower support and indeed they should be able to put a dent in the HP of the Senegals but here comes a sandwiching maneuver from the Senegals here catching one of the Pistolias in the middle of another Senegals with great weapons and this unit is probably being doomed right now being completely surrounded and overwhelmed by a ton of Senegals and once they're routed they're quickly wiped out by the surrounding beastmen a rather early loss for the Empire as all those ammo on the Pistolias are gone. On the other side, there are Senegals with great weapons and regular Senegals moving into flanking position, but there is no backline for them to run over, so they'll probably just have to wait for an opportunity for some hammer and anvil. While over here, Boris and the Empire Captain are going after Malagor the Dark Omen, but they're getting a little bit too close to the fleeing Pistoliers, I believe, and they are hit by the Tears of Nurgle. Being significantly slowed down and their Vigor Lords increased, they are unable to catch up to Malagor the Dark Omen here. While in the front line, Swordsmen are also being hit by poison from the Pestigals debuff, their damage output is slowed down for now. Empire Knights charging in to block up the advance of the Senegals and Halberdiers Spears are all moving up as well, just trying to protect their rear from being hammered by the Beastmen mobility. A devastating pendulum leaving a mark on both the state troops and the map. Unfortunately, we missed it, but that did enough damage to help the Pestigals quickly break through the spears, and now the Pestigals are going after the second line of Empire infantry. Malagor in the skies, though, after the spell cast, straight a little too close to the Pistoliers and getting blasted by the dual pistols as well. Empire Captain and Boris still going after the Beastman Lord, but I do think that this is a bit of a waste on Boris Todbringer. He is much needed in other battles right now, as the Pestigals and Angor Herds are slowly chewing through the swordsman front line. If Boris is in the front line engaging, then he could have helped these fights and tried to free up more state troops. And on the side here, the Empire mobility has moved quite far away from their main formation trying to do some skirmishing. 
They are being pushed back by the Minotaurs with great weapons and Sandicors. The Empire Knights are taking quite a bit of damage from all those armor piercing attacks, especially the anti large Minotaurs with great weapons. Pistolius trying to provide some fire support here, especially against the lightly armored and shielded Minotaurs with great weapons. They can do some pretty good work, but it seems that the Pistolius are blobbing up a bit too heavily and the unit models are interrupting each other's line of sight, not achieving their full damage potential onto the Minotaurs. While well, here comes a Sandgor threatening to hunt them down, so they need to start pull back and start skirmishing as soon as possible before being caught up in melee. Now back to the infantry formations here, Ungols and Pesticles are still hacking through the state troops, but without Boris helping out, they are pretty much left to their own devices because all the other mobility are either eliminated or being otherwise occupied. Nothing is really protecting their backline. The Empire mobility are all out of position and are unable to aid their infantry. So the basement units are able to sneak through the defenses of the state troops and hammer home onto their Pestagor anvil. This is gonna be bad for the swordsmen as the Sandigos are doing massive damage to these frontline troops. Boris and the Empire Captain finally finished off Malagor on the far side, but unfortunately, their front line is largely breaking apart. Halberdier is being recharged by the Butchers. Yes, they are anti-large armor piercing and a bit more elite than regular state troops, but the terror from the Butchers is just too much for these guys, and they have been forced into an early route, allowing the Pesticles and the Butchers to run them down, especially with the new pursuit behavior, making them much more vulnerable when they are routing. The nearby Empire Spears are disheartened to see Friendly's routing, so their leadership are dropping into breaking territory. On the far side, there a little bit of a slip up in micro as the Senegals are catching up onto the Pistoliers. The Pistoliers are being dragged into a melee fight, and this is very bad for them as the Pistoliers are no match against these melee cavalry from the Beastmen army. A fate of Buna on to the Butchers of Kalkinga trying to drain away their health, but this direct damage spell is easily counteracted by the regenerative trait of the Butchers. They will take damage, but they won't have any model losses, so they will hold on while the Empire Captain will be swarmed by the Pestigals and Butchers of Kalkingard. Butchers still having 16 unit models and plenty of regeneration for them to just mitigate all that direct damage spell. And the Empire Captain here being completely overwhelmed by armor piercing is being pushed back, terrified, and will be escorted off the white line, being so close to the edge of the map. On the far side, their pistol is managed to put some dent in the Senegal's HP despite being dragged into melee. Their skirmishing firepower is still quite strong, so over time they will do damage, but unfortunately just not quite enough to push off their pursuers. So this leaves only one pistolier from that corner alive right now. Avoiding being hunted down by Senegal's now trying to reinforce the middle fight. Spear is still fighting over here, having roughly one third of their HP. Boris will be reinforcing this fight, trying to apply some stat debuffs and terror to the Pestigals. Actually, terrified the Minotaurs, but as he tries to chase off the great weapon ones, the Butchers are slamming into his back, preventing Boris from properly escorting these fleeing cows off the map. Now Boris is stuck fighting some Beastmen elites. The game has gone on for 6 minutes now and some of the pistolators have ran out of ammo. They will have to throw themselves into melee which they suck at but still they already earned back quite a bit of value, almost double actually of their cost. Only one pistolier with ammo remains for the Empire. These pistoliers are shooting into the backs of the Pestigals, accumulating some damage but they are also caught by Pestigals themselves, so they are gonna take some losses here from the melee attack. Something else has to come in and bail them out and they have to start running, but unfortunately they are not on auto skirmish mode, so they are standing still taking hits from all those Pestigals. That said, they have been doing some pretty good damage to the Beastmen units, the Pestigals being inflicted with the attacked by missile debuff. They are considering running away, but with the Empire units routing, they have stabilized their leadership. Boris is fighting in the mix of all these state troops here. The Halberdier is still trying to hold here, but being recharged by the Senegals, their leadership took a pretty heavy hit. And then the Minotaurs cycle charging, routing off the spears, thanks to the Butchers of Kalkingard providing terror, forcing the state troops into an earlier route. Now the Beastmen with their superior mobility can hunt down the routed state troops. The Empire simply don't have enough cavalry to counteract the Beastmen mobility and more Beastmen units are converging onto this lone unit of Halbert Deers. Beastmen securing the control of the battlefield is able to pick off the Empire units one after the other as they are rather isolated. The Empire simply don't have anything to resecure their routed units. 
Except maybe Boris, who is now diving down onto the Sandigors, terror routing them off to try and save the Amethyst Wizard, who is also routed. The Empire is cut off from their magic support for now, as the Amethyst Wizard almost got killed by the Sandigors until Boris bailed him out. Maybe he can regroup right before the White Line, but I do doubt it with so little HP left on the guy. Butchers of Kalkengard will be surrounding Boris Toddbringer here, making sure that he will be pinned down in this melee fight, especially in the middle of a forest, having his melee stats debuffed while the Butchers of Kalkengard being woodsmen themselves don't suffer any stat penalties fighting in, in the vegetation. On the far side there, the overwhelming force of beastmen, the Pestigols, Angols and Senegals manage to push back the Empire Knights and Pistoliers. The Pistoliers, despite taking so much damage, they still manage to earn back their value after all actually two times of their value after using up all their ammo. So did some pretty solid work, but unfortunately, they're just too fragile to be of any use here after their ammo is gone and it is in the late game. Boris will be attempting to pull out of these butchers of Kalkin God, and here comes a fate of Buna from the aim of this wizard, who somehow managed to recover his leadership. Yeah, right here. Squeezing out most of the remaining Winds of Magic, dropping that one spell before being completely routed off by the Minotaurs with great weapons. The spears over here are still relatively healthy compared to everything else, but unfortunately they have been terrified and then routed by the Butchers and the subsequent Pestigor pursuit. Pestigor is now getting quite a bit of kills and almost earning back their value, earning back their value in any second now, and there they go. They managed to earn their cost back and will continue chasing after the state troops, preventing them from returning to aid Boris. Now Boris is left alone in a horde of Minotaurs and Pestigors, some very angry cow action here. And Boris is not enjoying this fight whatsoever, surrounded by armor piercing and a bit of anti-large as well. His HP is quickly dropping, simply can't catch up to the damage he's taking. And the Beastmen will be securing their win. GG to both players and big thanks to Crown Metal for sending in the replay. Some of the Pistoliers did really well in this game, as their dual wielding shots that are actually aimed instead of the spray and pray outrider repeater handguns actually did really well against the Sandigals who are unshielded and unarmored and the Minotaurs as well. I do like the Pistolier pick in this matchup a lot with their solid non-armor piercing missile damage and 360 shooting which the outriders lack. This allows the Pistoliers to shoot while running away from their pursuers but the outriders cannot. Unfortunately, a bit of slip-ups in micro and allowing the Senegals to catch up with them, eliminating some of them in melee, prevented them from maximizing their potential. For the rest of the army, the state troops were outclassed by the basement infantry, while the Empire Knights, having to deal with so much armor-piercing units today, they were not able to provide the Pistoliers the protection they need. I do think that one of the more obvious mistakes in this game for the Empire is that Boris spent most of his early game chasing after a much faster Malagor and not actually fighting elsewhere to provide the state troops the kind of monstrous support they need to beat back the Sandigors, Pestigors and Minotaurs. And as a result, when Boris actually landed and tried to fight, it was late game and most of the state troop support were gone and he was fighting alone against so many armor-piercing monsters and cavalry. Aim of this wizard did some okay damage with the double fate of Bunas and the Empire Captain got beat up quite hard by the Butchers. Now for the Beastman army Butchers of Kalkengard, surviving with all their unit models till the end of the game, getting some really solid value, surrounding and beating up Boris and his Griffin, and then the Minotaurs did some pretty good damage, Senegals with great weapons due to their armor piercing traded pretty well into the Empire Knights, while one of the Senegals, the regular variant, was able to catch and eliminated quite a few of the Pistoliers. The Pestigals did some pretty good work here, killing a ton of state troops, and Angols provide some chaff presence for the Senegals to hammer in. Malagor got eliminated early, so not much to say about him. And yeah, that's it for today's battle. I hope you all enjoy this multiplayer action, and if you want to see more Total Warhammer content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.